Guys, so a few days ago, I took this to a skate park, which is the UK's tallest vertical jump, I believe, and we hit it flat out, probably around about 50, 60 mile an hour. It was just flat out. The thing just went straight up in the air, straight towards the moon. <laughs> and when it came down, it, it, uh, yeah, let's have a look. Do you want to get rich quick? Then buy a lottery ticket and hope for the best. If you want to get rich for sure, you have to provide either a product or service of value. I've spent the past 10 years of my life trying many different ways of making money online. And by far, the quickest and easiest way that I have found is by selling on eBay. And I've helped hundreds of people make thousands of dollars every single month. So if you want more money so you can buy more toys, buy a nice house, or quit that dreaded nine till five, then click the link down below and I'll show you how. So in this video, we can have a little look at it to see what's wrong with it, uh, order up some parts and then mend it. So the first thing that I noticed when it landed was that it lost power. Oh, just noticed, look, we've got a crack in the chassis there, look. Uh-oh, maybe we can save that chassis. Maybe not, I don't know. But anyway, when it landed, I tried to drive away and it just went whoosh. So I must have bent the motor mount or something's happening here. So we have to investigate there. Also, I smashed the rear shock tower, look. It smashed it straight off of the bulkhead. And it's also taken this link out here with it. Not sure if the actual diff case itself is all right or not. I think it is though, it looks pretty good. Then moving on to the front, uh, the shocks and everything's okay. The shocks has taken it, which I'm actually surprised about because these are the plastic shock bodies. And on my other Rustler two-wheel drive, whatever that is, uh, there, we're gonna repair this in a minute. These shocks have actually lasted pretty good. But anyway, moving on to the front, I have broken something here on the steering, look. There's that part in there. So we're gonna have a little whip apart and have a little look to see what's going on. Oh, drive shaft spent too, look. But anywho, let's have a look to see what's inside and see why it has lost drive. So actually looking at it, I don't know why it lost drive. Because at the moment it seems to be driving fine. All seems good. And I'm not really sure why it won't move. So maybe let's plug it in and give it a quick blast. So I'm running this on these Zot Power Lipos. These are dirt cheap, loads of power. I'm going to put a link to these down below. And I'm also running these Banggood Special Drive Shafts. I kept breaking the stock plastic drive shafts. And I've put these Banggood Specials on the back. And so far, they've been perfect. I'm also running the same ones on my Rustler two-wheel drive. And so far, they've been perfect too. So there's going to be a link to those down below. Hmm, I think just the motor moved. Uh-oh. Well, it's come away from the mount down there, look. So I think we'll whip out that motor and have a look to see what's actually going on. I think there used to be a pin sticking out of there, but I can't really fully remember. See that hole at the bottom there, look? It definitely looks like there's something missing there. So if we have a look at the exploded diagram, I can see there it's supposed to have one of these screws in there. So hopefully I can put a screw in like that. If not, I will need a new motor mount. And I can't actually get in there without removing this whole section. So let's take that out and then we can have a proper look at it to see if it's actually broken or not. So the chassis is broken at the back here, but I think it's probably going to live again and the place where I get my parts from, they're out of stock on chassis. So I think that's going to stay. I'm going to replace this actually. It's got a chunk missing out the bottom. I want to order the correct screws because this won't fit. The spur gear has a slight little bit of slippage on there, but I do have some optional ones here. This one here is a 52 tooth, I believe. Nope, a 54, sorry. And in here we have a 50 and a 52. So I may chuck on there a 52 just to gear it up slightly, make it a little bit faster. Bulkhead looks fine, so I think it is only the shock tower. And then with the steering, it's killed this part here, but unfortunately, you do have to buy the whole entire set look. So actually, the damage on this hasn't actually been too bad. That was a really really nasty well it was it landed flat but the height was unreal that must have been 40 to 50 feet up in the air and landed slap straight onto a concrete floor so i think it done pretty good not as good as the max but it's still done pretty good. So next, let's have a look at my Rustler two-wheel drive. So I know a lot of you guys want to see more of the Rustler two-wheel drive. For me I struggle driving two-wheel drive. I prefer the four-wheel drive where you can just gun it, nail it, drift it around. You've got brakes properly. With these, if you put the brakes on, it's just like yanking up the handbrake and it spins out. So I find these quite tricky to drive and these definitely require a lot more skill to handle than a four-wheel drive. So some people really love two-wheel drive. 
from me, they're a bit of a handful. But in any case, I do want to bring it back to the channel. I do need to fix it, and I do have to part. So first of all, at the front, uh, this pin here has come out. I'm not sure if it's bent or not, but if it is or not, I've got a brand new one anyway. I need to put an E-clip on the front here, and I think that pin that's going through there is bent as well. I'm not sure I have any, so I'll probably have to straighten that one. And then for the rear, I've broken one of these turnbuckles, but I'm not really a fan of turnbuckles because, well, if they're strong, they're fine, I guess. But turnbuckles more if you're racing and you want to get all the perfect camber angles and everything. So I've got these fixed upper links from RPM. Uh, these are not adjustable, obviously, but... They should be stronger, so hopefully that's going to stop it from doing that again. And I'm also hoping that I can fit these onto my slash 4 before, which is upstairs, because that keeps busting these turnbuckles as well. So if I could find some solid links that are flexible and don't break, that would be a bonus. But for now, let's stop waffling and get some stuff on here. Hmm. So that's not actually designed to go in there. So these ones are actually designed for a different bolt. And looking at the exploded diagram, yes, look, it's supposed to have one of those sort of screws. So that's another one that I can't fix because I got to order that bolt. I just had a quick look, I haven't got any. And also while I'm ordering, I may as well just order a new pin to go in here to do all that properly. So for now, that's all we can do today. So while we're waiting for new parts, I may as well paint myself up a new body. So a lot of people keep asking me, what is this body? Well, it is a Proline Bulldog body. I don't make it anymore, but I do have a couple of these in stock. So I'm going to paint up another one. Probably going to do it the same colour. Let's have a look what paints we have. Yeah, I think we'll go with my classic red. And then we back it with a white to make the colour pop better. So I'll always do a rough cut first to get rid of the most of the plastic, then it makes it easier to cut it out properly. Now these scissors here, they've got a slight curve to them here, look, and that makes it easier when you're cutting around wheel arches and around bends. So when you're making cuts, it's always important that you make sure there's no sharp edges left in the plastic because each little split can lead to a crack later on. So one thing that you want to do is when you're cutting is never let the scissors close all the way because what that's going to do is going to leave a little point at the end where it cuts as a perfect opportunity for a crack to start. So you want your edges to be as smooth as possible. And if you happen to sort of have a few little rough bits on your body, it's worth getting a bit of sandpaper and just rubbing it all off. Every little imperfection can lead to a split later on. And one tiny little nick in the body is later on can lead to this. And you want to pay special attention to corners because that is one of the places where cracks are most likely to start. So just make sure you sand it all and just make sure that it's perfectly smooth. Because it may seem like a little bit of extra work, but it's going to save you a lot of time by keep painting up new bodies. So next we've got to degrease it. Some people wash it with washing up liquid and water. I'd like to use this brake cleaner stuff. The only reason for that is that it's a lot quicker. Now some people have complained to me before and said, Kev, it absorbs into the plastic and it makes the plastic weaker. And that could be the case. I'm just giving it a quick wipe. I'm not leaving it doused in it. So, you know, if I sprayed it directly onto the plastic, then maybe it would. I don't know. But this is how I've always done it. And my body's normally, mm, well, I don't last that long. That's probably more down to my driving style. More than my body painting. Next, we need to make the holes in the body. And I like to use a body reamer. Luckily, this body here already has the holes marked out where you have to make them. I used to do this with a drill bit. But the trouble is with a drill bit, it leaves jagged the edges. And then you've got a point where the body can start splitting. So I'm going to put a link down below where you can buy something like this from. And don't worry about that slight jaggedy look. That's just a clear film that's on top of the body. As soon as we pull that off, it's all going to look perfect. And then before we paint it, I like to just give it one more quick wipe over. 
with a brake cleaner just to make sure that we get rid of any fingerprints that might be on there. Because every little fingerprint is going to lead to the paint possibly not sticking. And then I like to rough up the surface of the body with one of these scouring pads and it just scratches up the surface a little bit of the body which allows the paint to stick. And it might make the body look a little bit matte finish now and you can see all the scratches. But once you get the paint on there, it's gonna look perfect. And one last wipe and then we're gonna be ready to paint it. So here's my favorite color that I like to use. This is from Car RC. So first coat is a dusting layer. Let me wait for that to dry and that gives us the rest of the paint something nice to stick to. Then I'll probably give it another two or three layers until like, the paint's nice and evenly on there. We'll let it dry and then we'll give it a layer of white and that's gonna make the red paint really pop and stand out more. So we're just gonna let that red dry and then we're gonna stick on some white. So while that's going on, I'm just gonna cut out a few of these stickers and that is one gripe that I have with Proline is that these stickers are not pre-cut. And in this day and age, even some of the cheaper Banggood cars, they come with stickers that are pre-cut and it would just make life so much easier. If I've got one complaint about Proline bodies, then this would be it. So this body does come with a wing that you can put on there, but I'm not gonna bother because it's only gonna get smashed off anyway. So now that the red is touched dry, I'm just gonna paint it with this night white also from Court RC. Boom. All right, the paint's touched dry, so now we're almost done. Boom. Check it out. Look at the shine in the paint. So soon, this rustler is going to be as good as new again. So next, let's have a look at this Traxxas X-Max 8S. So a bit of a problem I'm having with it now is that the pinion keeps falling off. Actually, the pinion's not falling off this time. So, what? That's strange. We've lost drive somewhere. I can see the drive shaft in there spinning. Oh! Ah, I can see in here. So hopefully, I have some spare parts. So here I have my very own personal X-Max parts department. But it looks like I haven't got the part that I need. Oh, uh. But I do have the old Kush drive out of this X-Max because this X-Max here is now running the mod 1.5 gears uh, which Dean makes. So all I've got to do is change over the spur gear because this one here is a 46 tooth and the one I normally run on this X-Max is a 50. And even though I do use the ugger duggers, I do go in afterwards and tighten up all of these screws by hand. Because if you rely on just the ugger dugger, you're either going to not do them tight enough, or you're going to make them too tight. So I'll run a longer screw on here with an M3 nut on the end of it, because I've had these come loose before. So now with these little modifications, they don't. So next, we've got to change the tyres. So these ones here are actually almost brand new wheels and tyres. But I don't think they were glued properly from the factory. And where the gluing come undone, and then the tyres sped up, it all kind of come off, expanded, and then blew the rubber off. So for now, we're just going to chuck an old wheel back on there. But anyway, that's enough wrenching for today. Some of you guys have been complaining, saying that you want to see more wrenching on the channel. So I've done a couple of videos recently. I just want to see how popular they are. If nobody watches them, there's no point in me making them. But anyway, before we end the video, I just want to quickly show you all the stuff that works and all the stuff that still needs more wrenching to be done on. So everything up here, uh, I think works. Uh, this one needs some work on it, and I will bring that out soon. I know I keep saying it, it needs a little bit of work. Not too much, but the main one being is the motor shaft is too long and it rubs on the LiPo battery. So I've got to cut the end of the motor shaft off, and I think I'm going to put the original suspension back on it. This is running car show suspension, and it's just all the wrong geometry, so I might have to swap that back. The axial grave digger has lost drive somewhere. So I'm going to have to have a look at that to see what caused that. Everything along here all works perfectly. This needs a new servo. Oh, actually that I forgot about. This one needs a new diff cup. This up here all works now. 
This had the drive shafts falling out, which I've now solved that issue, I hope. So I can take that out, out again soon, but it does need a new rear chassis brace because that might be why it was popping out to start with. So here's the tank set I just did a review on. This one here only drive, well, it only goes round in circles, doesn't go forward or backwards. So I may well take that apart if anybody's interested so you can see how it works inside. Maybe we can fix it. Maybe we can even make it faster somehow. So give me a note down below if that's something you want to see or not. The two rustlers are waiting for parts, so they're going to be back in action soon. So the slash, that really needs a full rebuild. I mean, mainly just the bearings replacing because I had it out in water and yeah it does still move but it's quite quite seized up a lot of the bearings are seized up so i will whip that apart soon let me know if you want me to do a video of it because these videos always take ages and ages and ages to make loads of effort loads of editing and if nobody watches it's not really worth wasting my time the 6x6 needs a new motor i think it's a motor maybe it's an esc something's burnt out in there so i'm going to get that up in action again very soon all these banggood specials i've got in the shelves here they all work i think so almost everything is alive which is quite a rarity for me both the bahas work although i do have to fit a kill switch to that one there and the uh, four stroke engine in the crawler i've got it running now it does drive so make sure you watch that video if you haven't seen it already if it interests you and make sure you subscribe